So, Gary, pre-season training is uh, almost complete. Two matches away from our first practice match against North Ballarat. How have the boys uh, shaped up compared to last pre-season? Oh, I think we're certainly more forward, Pete, than what we were last year. There was a lot of issues after the Premiership and a lot of players were undecided about their future and the club had a few uh, board things they had to sort out. So I certainly feel our recruiting's uh, been more forward in its preparation and actually who we've been able to recruit to the club. So that always pleases me. The hard work has uh, been done up to this point. The conditions have been really hot, as we know. But I'm happy that we're actually coming along in a forward direction. So we'll know more about our group over the next uh, month with the uh, practice matches that we've got at hand and hopefully we'll have uh, a relatively injury free list to pick from that always pleases the coach and uh, then we can actually hit the ground running because I think the competition's improved the way clubs have recruited that certainly seems to be much more positive all round so I think it's going to be a very tough year for uh, the Port Melbourne Footy Club from a competition point of view and we don't have a God given right to think because the last five years have been good that uh, the sixth year will be that way. Last year all the talk was about tall timber or the lack thereof. This year, uh, quite different. From Frankston, Toby Thorland, from Oakley Chargers, Chris Prouse, and I believe a new recruit from the Northern Knights, 201 centimetre ruckman in Sam Gilmore. That's correct, Pete, and uh, we certainly were as diligent as we could be with getting actually tall players to the footy club. So their guys that you mentioned uh, at this stage just a little bit behind in their preparation, but we're hoping that Prousey will be available for the second practice match, which is the 9th of uh, March. We hope that Sam will be available for the last practice match, which will be the 23rd against uh, Casey. And obviously you've got Skip in there as well. And we've also got a cousin of uh, the ex-champ of the footy club, David Pitt, his cousin Ben Perry, who played at Spotswood last year. He's another 198 centimetre ruckman and uh, someone that maybe some people have forgot about, a guy out of the Oakley Chargers uh, three years ago by the name of Paddy McMahon, and Paddy's 203 centimetres, so Paddy seems to have got through at this stage relatively unscathed as far as the pre-season goes, so we've got five now of uh, just around that 200 plus centimetres, so we certainly hope that'll improve our ruck stocks over the 2013 year. And of course the club's got a ter terrific relationship with the Oakley Chargers, uh, how many boys have we managed to pick up on the Chargers so far for the list? Well, at this stage we've got eight, so we're always very, very happy to get any particular player that comes out of the Oakley Chargers, so we know we've got to nurture that uh, relationship. Some unfortunately slip through the net and end up out of Box Hill because they're probably a little bit closer to where they live and they sometimes find it hard to uh, go past the Box Hill City Oval and get down to the lovely surrounds of Northport, but you know, that's just the way the competition is, so we've got to make sure that we as I said, nurture that relationship. We've also got that opportunity throughout the course of the year to play uh, some Oakley Chargers players as that 23rd player, and I think that's been a successful innovation from AFL Victoria. So, but this stage, if there's eight guys plus Michael Barnes out of the Sandringham Dragons, we may have our 23rd player covered at this stage. Talking about some experienced players, uh, first of all, Luke Rounds from Collingwood, Danny Hughes uh, off from Casey, and then also uh, regaining Premiership player Nathan Batsanis, who we should add fared fairly well in the McGarry medal last year and won a uh, Premiership at Norwood. Absolutely, and those players that you mentioned should be all stars for us, really, and we know Batsy very, very well, and you know Luke Rounds has unfortunately not been told that he's uh, capable of playing at the AFL level, but... We just think that's a bonus for uh, where we're coming from. Matt Field sent out a Casey. He's a nice little uh, left footer who's played his 50 games. Julian Rowe, who uh, had a stint at Port back in 2007 and has been a successful amateur player for the last five years, has come back for another try at this level. And Dale Whelan, who was an up-and-coming young tall forward at Frankston, before he had to go to Wangaratta with work and missed a year last year with an ACL. So they should be all players that will step straight in, given the uh, depth, hopefully, that we have improved with this year. On that, we look at uh, Williamstown will soon be going alone, but they've now brought in a rule with only 11 Bulldogs players will play, so they can field more VFL-listed players. Bendigo Gold's come into the competition. Frankston's opened up the checkbook. Why do you think these quality players are picking Port Melbourne rather than those other options? Well, they probably see the geographics of where we're positioned, being only 3Ks from the Central Business District. I'd like to think also, too, the fact that there's been a reasonable amount of success here at this football club over the last five years. Certainly, there's been some players drafted, Robbie Nahas, obviously Sammy Dwyer, even Cal Sinclair spent two years here and went over to WA for a year, so we'd like to think that. And 
I guess, the different types of support staff. Leslie Quarrell, you couldn't go past him as the best board man going around and uh, maybe something to do with the coaching staff. So we'd like to think that's all a plus. Talking about the coaching staff, one change already. Um, Adam Scrobelak is out. He's taken up a role at the Western Jets. Who's coming to replace him? Well, we've actually tried to diversify our coaching staff a little bit because basically at this level a lot of particular coaches end up doubling up their jobs and uh, it's quite often difficult to then match that with a remuneration so we've actually separated our uh, coaching staff this year so development will be with Greg Ryan and uh, there's a guy by the name of Lee Gathercole there who'll be his assistant. We've obviously looked at uh, club legend Biff Dermott being able to help out there as well. Tristan Francis who unfortunately can't play this year due to a pretty bad hip He's had that operated on. He'll actually assist uh, Greg and also to Brett Curran will assist Greg. For our senior development team, there's going to be an emphasis placed on that development, as I said. And Andrew Mirrams, who was our premiership forward coach, he comes back after 12 months at Williamstown. Stephen Mead will take over the forwards. He took over from Adam. Peter Searle gets her defence area in line again and uh, John Edgar who was my premiership midfield coach he comes back as well so we've basically beefed up our coaching staff and uh, hopefully that'll all add to what I think is going to be really important as the development of the next core of players to take this club further in the coming years. And just quickly a few in the departure lounge uh, Stephen Brewer and Adam Bentick to name two. Yeah, sad to see both those players go because they're quality players and obviously quality people. Sammy Dwyer with him getting drafted to Collingwood so, and probably Tim Allen just in the last couple of weeks which was really disappointing that we couldn't sign Tim. So they're probably the mains out of what we had and we've really just got to make sure though that that's now done and dusted and what we move into is a hopefully another successful year and uh, that's what we'll be doing. And just quick before we let you go, have you had a, a chat uh, with Sammy or uh, Cal prior to or after their uh, NAB Cup debut? No, not as yet, unfortunately. So, But from all reports, Sam was reasonably happy with what he did. And it would just be important for both those boys, and in Cal's case especially, just to get game time and get through the match because there has been a few issues injury-wise with Cal. So, but no, I'm sure they'll do their families and themselves very, very proud. Gary, thanks for your time. My pleasure, Pete. Thank you. Borough TV is a Port Melbourne Football Club production.